All right. We'll now call the special budget workshop to order for August 26th, 4 p.m. Please rise to the invocation and pledge of allegiance. The invocation will be given by Deputy Mayor Jim Bernard. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely day. Thank you for the great. Ask you to be with us tonight for the breakfast as well as the guidance. Give us the wisdom to do your will tonight. We also ask you to protect our children now that it's time to go back to school. We're going to have to go to Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May you be seated. Please call the roll. Yes, sir. Member McGuire? Here. Council Member McCure? Here. Council Member Taylor? Here. Deputy Mayor Bernard. Here. Mayor Anderson. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We have the continuing discussion for fiscal year 24-25. has to be the draft general and water sewer fund discussion. Melody, is there anything you'd like to preface this with? Um, I just wanted to let you all know that the um, anything, all of the capital is in the budget already. Okay. Um, I just wanted you guys to... Uh, be aware of exactly what's in there. So if you want to vote on it one by one, you can't. If you want to say everything's good, I'm okay with that as well. Okay. The budget is based on the um five mills. Is your and, microphone on? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Now I can. <laughs> okay. That was just a test. Okay. Um and the merit increases are not included in the budget. So um just okay. wanted to let you know that. Okay, we got the health insurance. You all voted to go with the the no compete. So that was decreased from, I had 15% budgeted. So that's a decrease of 35,800. That's a change. Um, this slide just shows the citywide budget. This is what's advertised in the paper. So it's everything that we've talked about in one document. Five mils, correct? Correct. Correct. This is the general fund budget, and let's see that. With the, if we use the um, return on investment and after all the capital that's in there, we will take $1,074,360 out of reserves. Of which we have how much in reserve? Uh, we have right now, after that, so after that, one million comes out, we'll have six point four million. Okay. In the just in the general fund. Okay. Um, we spoke about the merit increases at one of the the meetings, but I wasn't clear if you guys wanted me just to go ahead and um, add those to the budget. And I think that there was some discussion about Chief Marcy being. Um, increased a little more, so I'm not sure if you guys what you guys want to do with that. So I need a consensus. That additional eight thousand we talked about. That's an additional thirty. What'd you say, Denise? Forty-two. Am I? Sorry, if council goes with the three point five percent merit increase across the board. Um, that will have would have left an additional eight thousand right um, that we weren't counting on initially that could be added to Chief Marcy's salary increase to bring him more up to speed with where he needs to be. And that would basically give him the same pay that the average uh, assistant chief would get. Is that correct? It it gets him in that ballpark. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Once hey. again, I'm sorry, Mayor. No, go ahead. Once again, what what was the remaining? It was about 8,000. Mm -hmm. All right. Any discussion on that? Any opinions one way or another? Is is the increase across the board, is it just for the uh, salaried or is it every? Yeah, it's only for salaried. And it's because the uh, hourly uh, staff are ba bound by the AFSME agreement oh, right. and they go off of the grade and step tables. 
So they already receive a anniversary merit increase every year, automatically built into those grade and step tables up to, uh, it's capped at, I think, 15 steps across the board. And, and we do have that, uh, Chrissy and I were talking about, we need, we need to reevaluate that next year. I don't know when that was set up. Um, it was before my time, um, those rates, but the, the table does get increased with the COLA, the 3% every year right. that those steps go up by the 3% okay. as well. Okay. Well, we have to make a decision. So is there any opinions one way or another? Well, I think uh, these merit increases are in general kind of minor, except for. So these individuals do not automatically get the 3% increase. That's what you're saying. They they get the, the 3% percent's COLA. That's okay. something totally different. That's just cost of living. Yeah, this, this um, is... And everybody gets that. Okay. The the merit increase is performance based, and you know that's that's something that we haven't had historically here, is a performance based okay. merit increase for the salaried employees. Okay. Um, earlier or last night, I asked you to send me a spreadsheet. I got that. Thank you. It was very nice. Um, some of the directors had a, their last increase was just in May, so then they would get that. Cola increase and a merit increase, and they just had an increase in May. If if we go with this, yes, to get everybody on the same playing field across the board. Now we don't have to do that. I mean, it's up to council. We can adjust it however you feel is is fair. You're talking basically about the non-staff members. No, the directors more so. I mean, because you said the directors, you're talking the managers. The super, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of like with Shelly. If if you just received a, a raise already, why would we be giving you another one? I get it. Okay. I, I understand the merit part, but I don't I don't understand why you would be getting two raises in a year. The I think the one that was in reference, what you brought up in May, uh, was Chrissy and her salary was bumped because of her uh, added responsibilities. Okay. That's not a normal merit for her. That's her assuming the responsibilities of the city manager. Okay. And the other one? Um, Jason. Jason is, he hasn't received a raise yet. Okay. Okay. Mm -mm. That's because he's still on probation, right? No, he's in permanent status now. Okay. So Liz was another one. And I think, um, your, your employee, what's her name? Oh, uh, Danny. Danny. Danny Al. Yes, the, those two are probationary because they, they were moved to a new position and received a, a pay increase for that. So, so their probation starts over at six, for six months probation. So they wouldn't be included in this 3.5? Correct. Okay. Then beyond that, we had a issue with the chief's position that it was underpaid compared to the average chief. Yes. Could you give us some numbers as to how much? Um. <clears throat> Considerable. I mean, I, I didn't get to do an extensive research on it, but I did poll some different cities and and they're paying their fire chiefs one hundred and two hundred and three thousand mm -hmm. on average. But I don't know the size of the departments that they're over mm -hmm. um, in those roles. And right now he's only at. Um, Seventy six right okay. now. So he's well under that. OK, when you say you poll cities, what? Because. I noticed that this board loved to post cities in the surrounding areas. Correct. And I, I guess that's it would be Sebring and Lake Placid and Cross Crew and all that. So what what cities did you post? Um, I looked at Sebring and I don't remember what the names of the other three were. There were three that we looked at that were comparable. I don't have that with me here. I mean, I could send it to you. Um, Wachula, I think, was one. Uh, size wise, we looked at cities that had around a ten thousand population. Oh, is okay. what we and we we looked at four. So if you gave them the uh, the five, roughly five thousand merit increase and the additional eight, that still only puts them at eighty nine thousand. You say that the peers are roughly one hundred and two to one hundred and five. Mm -hmm. But again, that's what not knowing if they're over multiple. Sure. How many people they're over? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Well, perhaps we could do it individually so we can get somewhere. Okay. Um, so on the particular chief position. Um, do we want to go with zero, the merit increase of 4940, or the additional 8,000 as well? 
Um, so it would be raising his by almost $13,000 would be the highest or anything in between. Any opinions? I, I got a question for Denise. Denise, when the last time Chief had a raise? Well, should I ask Chief? Um, 2022. 2022. It took, yeah, I took the position in 2019. I got a um, yes, you know, a, a raise to a chief salary then uh -huh. of 72,000. That 72,500 in, in 2019. 2019 to 2022, when I went from 72,500 to 76,000. Okay, yeah. so so the last one you got was 2022. You didn't get one in 23. No. Correct. And. Was it due to your performance? Huh. I'm asking. I'm just asking. No, I, I, mean, I don't think we I, had. Okay. I don't Maybe. think there's a performance evaluation ever been done on me. Right. Okay. Okay. I wouldn't be opposed to bringing up where he, he should be with the other cities. I at, agree. At, at what amount? To bring him up to the, what did we say, 91? If you, if you added 13,000, it'd be 89. Yes. 89. And everybody else was over 100. Any other opinions? I, I agree with that. Okay, we got two. Anyone else? I'm fine with that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Anyone care to make a motion to that effect? So move. How's that? Okay. Right. So the, the, the motion would be to raise the merit increase of 4,940 um, plus an additional. We, make an, we can't make any motions, but we can do it by general consensus. So I believe that general consensus was confirmed. Okay. okay. We did that. You got it. Okay. All right. One down. I expect to see you working go. on Sundays. Um, I don't think we should split them apart personally for the remainder of them. I feel like Denise had a rhyme and a reason to how she evaluated each of these, which is what we kind of wanted to avoid, just picking and choosing. Yeah. Right. No, I agree. It's just that one position we were way off yes. from where. Right. The you rest had of an extra were. stipulation. But as far as the rest of them, I think we should say. Yes, merit pay or no merit pay, period, for the rest I, of them. I say yes on all the rest. So everybody's okay with the 3.5? So that's a 3% COLA and a 3.5 merit. So that's 6.5%. 6.5. That's what is proposed. We have one yes. What does the rest say? I mean, these raises are just a couple thousand dollars, most of them, I mean. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with it being a couple thousand dollars, but I just I look at the other hourly people, and I know you said that that's a step program, but some of those people haven't had a raise for years. They have a raise every year. Don't yeah, they? Have every, every year, merit, a merit increase. I mean, it, that is their their increase that they get. Every we don't year. normally do merit increases. Right. Right. This Correct. This is a highly this is unusual. New. This is a highly first unusual thing. Yeah, at least for the past 12, 13 years. Mm -hmm. So the hourly rate um, employees that has been getting this um, this hourly rate that is considered their merit. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the other uh, salary, they was getting a raise according to what council decided. Mm -hmm. The other employees are under a union contract as well. And and also too, I just want to add that three point five percent. That is the national percent this year for merit increases across the board, that 3.5. All right. I read that too. I, I guess here's, here's my problem I'm having, and, and, and I know we got to decide. Um, and that is the merit increase, you know, across the border. But, you know, we was worried and just got to worry about chief pay that make sure he's up there where he should be. If we do this 3.5, how long is it going to take us to get them where they need to be competitive around this area? You know, we, we tend to talk about managers and chiefs and they pays and all that. But when it comes to the regular salaries employees, you know, we want to throw them, you know, dollar fifty here, two dollars, you know. So my concern is when are we going to get our employees to the pay where they're competitive around here in just the area that we are that's Walmart. Part, that's part of the negotiation between management and the union. Exactly. And it's so what it's going to take is a, we need to evaluate the step tables, make a proposal to the union and begin the negotiations because we can't move forward if we reach impasse. 
I see your point though. It's, uh, but it, it makes absolute sense. It really does. But with step tables, that's kind of the downside yeah, if you want to call it process. that. And so um, you think about last year's one time we talked about uh, the um, You know, I've been out of the work field for a while, so y'all help me out. Uh, I'm look, um, you know, the minimum you can pay a person. Minimum wage. Minimum wage. wage. Didn't, didn't, wasn't it decided that federal that by 25, everybody had to be at? 15. 15. 15, 15 and is in the, the next two years. Huh? In the next two years, it'll be up yeah, to it has to be by 2026. Oh, they didn't move the date because I remember 25. Yeah. This year, this year in September, it goes to 13. Next year, September, it goes to 14. And the following year, it'll be at 15. And we got anybody like thirteen and fourteen dollars? No, our 13. lowest step I think is fourteen dollars and eighty-five cents. Okay, I believe right, right around there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes or no? Merit increase. I'm I'm for yes. I'm yes. We got two yeses. Sure. I'm good with it as well. Three, four. Okay. We got five yeses there. Says You're going to Hollywood. No. <laughs> <laughs> so the 3.5 mayor increase will occur every year? Um, no. We're, we're just talking this year. Okay. It can be re okay. revisited yeah. next year. Budget okay. year 24, 25. Right. Very good. All right. Next. Okay. So I just need clarification on the assistant city manager. Um, are we adding a new position for that? Is it going to merge with the city clerk? Wasn't well, Jerry supposed to talk about that as far as the charter concern, how we have to do that, whether it's an ordinance or something we can vote? I don't remember where exactly we left it. Jerry was going to be reviewing the charter. Yeah. But at this point, I would say for the sake of budget discussions, postpone that until next year. It gives us more time to develop it if that's the direction council wants to go. I have no problem with that. And I would I say definitely make sure the new city manager has a say so in it as well. I mean, whether he would or uh, she would need that help. Assuming we keep them a whole year, they will. <laughs> <laughs> and assuming that they'll have a great teacher to bring them up to speed really quick. Okay. Anyone opposed to taking it up next year? No, I'm not no. opposed to that. Got two more items there. These are two new positions that were requested by um, the public works director. So there's a utility management analyst and a sanitation landfill operator. Jason. Are these people, you have people in place. Do you want to move up to this or just going to make new hires? Hit the button, Jason. There we go. Y'all hear me? What yes. was that, uh, Vice Mayor? What'd you say? I said, are these going to be promoted people to these positions, or are you going to go out and hire new people? So there's a little there's a little mix up on this, I guess. So sanitation landfill operator. Yes. The on that position, that's actually someone going to close. That's not a new position. It's um, that's something that. I took the advice of the mayor during our last the guidance during the last uh, meeting that we had regarding solid waste. So we went out and we priced, um, there's a, a mine that's filling in the mine. So that debris that they're putting in there, they're taking in um, landscaping debris and different types of, of debris. It's only $2.50 per cubic yard. And we're averaging around 440 cubic yards. So it's going to cost us roughly, based off those numbers, $1,100 a month to, to go drop it off and leave it there. The salary of the employee, you see, plus the equip, him having a truck, equipment, everything else. I'm not saying we close it. We can still mow it and keep it in case we ever need it in the case of emergency. We still got to chip up some of the remaining, the debris that's out there. But that position is going uh it's gonna it's gonna go away um but it's not getting he's just gonna end up shifting down because it's within a classification so there's bumping rights so then it would just kind of shift down and then someone will likely move out of the department and move over into public works uh and into a opening that we have so we're kind of keeping something there on the side when we can to move that 
whoever ends up going over to the other side. Um, the utility management analyst, that would be from the outside. That uh, I, don't, I don't believe, we may have one or two people that can do it on the inside, but I am requiring a bachelor's degree. And I don't know who had, I have to evaluate all that. Of course, we post internally first and see if anybody qualifies and we can go over that. Um, but that's that's pretty much what I see from from that position. And this wouldn't uh, cross over with the GIS analyst at all. This is something totally different. Yeah, this is different. This is this is having. It's kind of like having an assistant public works director, but more office related just to help out all the staff across the board with the different things that they need, whether it's coming up, with delivering good PowerPoint presentation, whatever it may be, Excel, reviewing rate increases, uh, different things, looking at budget, seeing where we can improve uh, and, and assisting, assisting me. So I get out in the field a large amount because I, I want to see what's going on. So when I'm out there and then end up what happens is with the meetings and the work and looking in the field ends up like some of my office work, it travels with me to the house. And some of y'all know that, that I don't, if you give me something after hours, I'm, I'm going to take care of it, but it just kind of assists me there somewhat. So bringing, bringing a professional analyst and I, I know the, va the value that they have and it's, it's a, a great position. Many good organizations, they have that. So what kind of qualifications would you be looking for in that person? It would be uh, someone who maybe has a, a bachelor's in data, data analysis and someone who's really good with Excel word has a strong vocabulary put together, you know, main different, whatever we're looking to do. Um, basically in a, a good office assistant that is not it's above administrative assistant it's it's past that i actually like that idea because i like to have you out in the field <laughs> thank you and um and it's also to assist with the grants and all the all the things that we have and to kind of keep keep me on my p's and q's when i know i need to get somewhere hey we have this we have this deadline we have to make sure and just a, another set of eyes because what we are moving forward with with the with the grants that you see this in front there's a there's a large amount, not only just some of the grant administration, but also the 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 gathering that we have to do to then uh, present that. So that it's a uh, it would be a great assistance for me. Um, I would I would greatly appreciate it. The other the other two positions were just kind of like re reclassifications. Right. So those those positions were the it was a utility super um, a utility right foreman. Yeah. Sorry right away maintenance you had right right, right away yeah yep. yeah so the right away is uh currently i would see a d tech that's that's filling that position and um he's he's assisting with the right away program so we have many plans and whatnot in front of us we we're taking um uh revenue in at for so it's four hundred dollars per right away but we don't charge uh, utility agencies that we already collect revenue from so we can't double dip and get money from them but you, you all seen we get a significant amount. So this is just kind of putting back and the salary increase likely, I, I can't say I'm giving it to that person, but that salary would be very minimal and be more than covered by what we receive in the right of way program anyway. So it's basically the salary that's already there. And kind of as a little side job assists with the, the ordering. So he orders the stock. He's really good at that. And then We'll see how we go as we as we get bigger. But for next year, it's kind of like a dual role in a way. But saying, "Hey, you're you're, you're at this level. You're not an hourly employee uh, per se. You're, but I mean, you're. I think he still gets paid by the hour. But he's more. He's in the 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 management realm, shall I say? Um, the other one was just uh, the C and D that we had the water. We have a a foreman that's over water and sewer, and that's just splitting that. And having one person over water and one person over sewer, again, all the different requirements that we have, and it's just span of control, making sure that they can direct and and see the teams that are out there. From what we've seen, uh, the utility manager and I, we looked at it, and we thought it was a great idea, and so we put people in, and you know they have the certifications and licensing to take over those particular programs. Any questions? I do. Go ahead. Jason, who's doing the work for these jobs now? We don't have any. The utility management analyst is basically me and a little bit of uh, 
if I guess if with anything, with maybe a little bit of Andy, a little bit of Karen, so, but mainly me. So every, uh, um, all the descriptions of these jobs are being taken care of by some staff, one or another, pretty much. Is there any other descriptions that's going to be added to these jobs if these jobs ever become open? Uh, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have a job description for it and it'll be there, but we already have the, the job descriptions for um, the utility foreman. I'm not changing that. And because it's just going to be whether you're water or sewer, I don't have to call it water or sewer. And I want them to be flexible anyways, but that's that's already there. Just a utility management analyst and um, and the right of way coordinator. It's the problem that I have. And, and there's a reason why I asked these questions. I wanted to know, was any of these your job descriptions? No, and none of them is your job description. No, I mean, I, I, I do. I like. I won't tell anyone that's not my job, right? So uh, every part, every aspect of is is my job. No, this no. is this is it. Uh, to sorry, go ahead. I'm just trying to get a clear understanding here, Jason. These positions that you want us to open up, and they all come with different job descriptions. With those job descriptions, does any of them belong to you right now? No, not specifically. Not specifically to me. No. Belongs to other employees. Uh yes. Okay. Here's the problem that I have. If we have hired a person to do certain job and it comes with certain description, then why are we hiring someone else to do it? If that's their job to do it, why do why are we going to hire someone else? It goes back to the 3.5 percent that we're giving to these the um, salary people and that's all we decided to give them 3.5 we all agree we never seems to have a, a, a lot of money to give them but we can always create another position to put money somewhere else that's that's I'm so confused about and and if we're going to open up these positions for someone else you think we'll be worrying about the ones that get up every day come to work and do their job. We, you think we'll be more concerned about them than to try to open up another position where we have enough people already to cover down in those positions. That's my take on it. Okay, I understand that. It's, and I, I agree with you, but I'm I'm not, I can't make the pay. Like if you if you ask me, set the negotiating, that's, that's up to the council when it comes to negotiating to give direction to the manager. Hey, when we go into negotiation, then we're going to walk in and tell them right off the bat negotiation, we want to give them 5% increase. And this is what we want back or whatever the negotiation is. That's completely out of my realm. The one thing I don't do is go up to regular employees and say, Hey, you're, you are like a, for a, a, not a regular employee, but a, a union employee classified position and say a bargaining unit and say, Hey, I'm going to go give you a raise. I can't. Cause then the next person can say, what about me? So it's through it's through the process. These are this is individuals that we're we're out there. We're, we're stretched in, so we're moving. Like we we've got a lot of stuff, and I, I don't I don't mean to put anything off of I can't do something or I won't. Like I'll go sit somewhere and there'll be a public works director. There'll be a utility director. There will be an engineer there, a town engineer. You're looking at all three of those people really here in a way. So that's, that's falls within my realm. I'm taking care of doing different things, whether you have utility superintendent, that's usually what it's called, not supervisor, right? So you, uh, Joseph Sleeve is a, a supervisor. He's working based off the job, the classification description. He's doing far and above what he's supposed to do as a supervisor. He's going above it. I mean, he's a manager, but he's going far and above kind of where he's at. I'm looking at stuff. I'm looking at items that will better our utility and allow us to increase. Do we have to have the positions? No, it, but I believe it's going to take our quality and take our capabilities and increase that. That's that's why I'm recommending the position. I, I understand. And I would have rather that if they have, if we got employees that's doing these jobs, you know, I, I assume they doing okay because I don't hear you complain about it. I would have rather you move those employees into those jobs because they're already doing them. So they may not have the degree, but they may have the experience. 
I would rather you have moved those employees, move them up into those jobs. Now we can give them a little higher raise. Now our pl our pl uh, employees like okay, they care about they care about us. They 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 looking out for us instead of you going outside and giving it to someone outside. I, I think what he's saying is okay. He can't give those. He he can't. He doesn't have the authority to give certain people raises. Right. You I also I also hear him saying that there's only so much a person can do. There's only so much Joseph can do. There's only so much Jason can do and do it well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's probably, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like but that's the angle he's I, coming from. Where where I'm saying is this, if if at the level where that, that pay is right now, that's the same thing Joseph makes, right? That's the same thing minus if there's a raise or whatnot. It's the same thing he makes. He's stretched out where you see the amount of projects that we have. If um, it's it's a large amount, what I've done at to your point, I took the positions, increased and gave opportunities. And since I've been here, I've been promoting, trying to get to school, get training, giving people opportunities, and see where they step up. So now the the water, we've kind of been working with the water, doing that. So exactly what you're talking about, increasing it, that's what we did with water. For right away coordinator, I can go out and, and request the same thing because people, I can I can call it a, a right away compliance officer and then require a degree. But I want to, I want, I've always allowed and, and hope that people from below uh, in the lower ranks can come up higher to management staff. So the right away coordinator, that's what we did with that individual as well. We've went ahead and opened that position. And that's, we, we know that that's going to get filled internally. So that's two positions. This is the only position that's going to be on the outside. And right now, like if I can make care in that or so on, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to go and say who I want to be, but there may be two employees within the city that may want to do it. I mean, I, if I, if I were to say, Hey, you know who would be great at it, Liz. And then she, yeah, I may get some people angry with me, but that may be something that, you know, the skills and what I need. It can be Liz, maybe Andy. May I don't I don't know their qualifications, but there may be somebody from the in, inside that comes in and is able to do that, and then someone else come in and and you know because they look at the salary, they see what it is, they want to apply for it, they apply for it. But I I agree with you, Councilwoman. I a hundred percent. Whatever I can do from the inside, that's something else. That's this isn't just looking for the outside. We definitely have to see who who may be able to fill that role. But this is something that we need for as a utility for everything that we have in front of us right now. Any other questions? Nope. If there's no more questions, uh, we'll need a consensus. We're mainly talking about the one position here. This would be the utility management analyst at 67,000. So we need a yes or no. I think it's a yes. I think we need it. We have one yes. What else do we have? Can I ask Jason just one more question? Yeah, go ahead. What, um, did you compare that salary with other locations that had this type of position and see how it compared? Yes, I did. It, it's it's maybe a little bit more. So it's depending on the area, but it's it's probably a little bit more than that because it's a four year. I like got we don't require the utility man and the supervisor utility manager have four year degree, mm -hmm. and that's that's what I'm I'm asking for. It's a little less that you know on the technical side where they have other licenses and certifications and their value it's definitely worth a lot um but it's a it's something separate that's why it's very similar it, i think it would be hard to attract if it was less than that the the people the person that we're looking for maybe interior i don't know yeah. all right we have one yes what else do we have i'm kind of i'm kind of i don't know i'm kind of sitting in the middle because I, I kind of agree with you on your position, but I also agree with Ms. Taylor. So I don't know. I'm kind of pulled. Ms. Taylor hasn't given us an answer yet. Oh, so. I'm, I'm a no. All right. So we got one yes. We got one no. So if you have somebody that's that's doing the job now, as she said, and you have somebody else who applies, would you be more apt to take the one? Well, I guess you would have to. Right. We have to hire within first. I'm, I'm saying that I have multiple people that can do certain parts of the job. I don't have anybody that can do the whole job currently within my department. I don't have anyone that can currently fulfill that role. The only person that's doing 
Huh? I'm sorry. They can't be trained. They can't be trained to do I, that. I mean, I can send them to all kinds of PowerPoint classes, data, but data analysts is, is stuff that takes some time to to learn. That's a pretty hard class and it takes takes experience. And I'm looking for the experience. So I want to get in and help us yeah. out with what we need to do. Realistically, the, a lot of the position is going to be helping out with some of the grants that we have coming up. And those are coming up in less than a year, you're saying, right? It's grants, compliance requirements, everything right. else, putting that all together. You're trying to get somebody that can hit the ground running within the next few months. Yes, preferably. Okay. So you, I, it's, it's long nights. Sure. And I'm in favor preferable. of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like Jason's really busted his rear end as far as getting out there and getting things done. And he listens any, any complaint or anything that any of us, you know, brings to him, he's yep. Johnny on the spot as far as getting it done. He's taken it upon himself to apply for all of those grants. I feel like it's extremely important that we follow all the protocols with the grants so that we can actually receive the grants, um, especially those that are forgiven. I know there's a lot of compliance issues with that and so on and so forth. So I feel like if he if he says he needs it for the betterment of the city, I feel like we should trust him. Yep. I, I can tell you one thing. I think he'd only been here a couple of months and there was a problem with a, a citizen who called me directly on a Friday night about four to five. And I called Jason and somewhere between five thirty and six o'clock on his own time. He was out there taking care of that issue on a Friday night after hours. I mean, to me, that says a lot about what he knows and what he needs. And I think that one of the problems that the city has is upgrading our entire water sewer plant things. We're so far behind. I don't, I don't even know if we even possibly even had a water issue today. Somebody said there was a problem today that we always have pipes breaking and so on and so forth. We need some experts to bring us up to date. We're so far behind that it's going to take us a long time even to catch up, let alone to be where we should be. So uh, I've, I've seen nothing but... Uh, Positive things from Jason. I, I think Jason's already doing multiple positions. Uh, I I like to see him out there in the field. I like to see him take care of things like the upgrades that we're planning on doing in Donaldson Park. I think he can take take care of that position real quick and take care of that stuff. I working with the people we have, so I, I, I trust him. He's the, he's the one man that I think that deserves what he's getting paid for. And then uh, if he says we need, I think we need an expert in the city to do this. That's what I think we need because that's what we've been lacking for years. Just going along with somebody trying to do the job instead of somebody that knows the job. He's demonstrated the the fact that he's going to go out and he's going to bring in the grants as well. And I think yeah. we all know that there's yeah. no way we can accomplish what we need to accomplish without getting those grants. Yeah, well, yeah that's so it. I feel like I it's mean, very, very important. One more question, and then I'll be I'll be done with this. The sixty-seven thousand that you came up with, you might have mentioned it already. Where did that total come from? Is that a consensus it's, instead of all the different yeah areas? The, across the board? Our our supervisor manager level is sixty-seven thousand dollars. The foreman, I think, it's like fifty-eight, something like that. Um, but it's it's at that level. So, Brittany, did you give an answer? Of yes or no? I'm in favor of it. I guess I'll hop on board. So yes. Yes. All right. So you have your consensus answers, yes. And we're good with the other two, the other um right away. Yeah, the right away and the okay. And the say, utility form. Yes. Internal promotion. All yes. right, thank you. Internal. Anyone else? We got two yeses so far. If it's internal, I say yes as well. Yeah, three. Yeah, internal, internal, yes. internal only, yeah. You have your consensus answers, yes. And I think that to your point, Bernice, that we need to work with the city manager, whether it's interim at the time being or the next city manager, to make sure that uh, they treat, uh, when it comes to union negotiations, to treat the existing employees properly. I agree with you on that point. All right. Page number seven. We got the <clears throat> consensus required for 12 items, looks like. You got timekeeping software, more replacement program. I believe these are all your items, right, Jason? Yes. Yes, they are. I don't know. They So we're still a general fund? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want me to go over every single one, or is, is there anything you want me to elaborate on? Is anyone opposed to any of these 12 items? Well, I got an answer on number um, three, four, five. 
three, four, and five. Say so you have questions? Questions. Go ahead. Jason, um, can you can you explain to me why we need the vehicle three, four, and five? And when you explain to me why we need them, can you tell me whether or not we got vehicles that can do the same thing that these can do? Good evening, Council. Joseph Sleva, utility manager. Uh, the two trucks that my department was looking to make the trade in on was uh, truck 59. Oh. Yeah, this is general fund. So um, those trucks were, uh, we went over uh, the other ones, it's like 11 years old, 13 years old. I forgot to, the, the time. I had it in one of my other, Probably but um, 17 years old, I believe. Was yes, it? it was pretty old, old trucks. Uh, some of, they have lights on. They have issues. And one of the things to, to kind of get with this is they have trucks and departments. It, there's divisions within the public works department. And a, a large, a good amount of trucks may have came to his department. And usually on general fund, just because of the way the funding is, sometimes general fund gets some of the leftovers or, hey, can you use that truck? You know, we need something. We don't have nothing. Something's better than anything. But then we start having issues to where there's some cost behind it. It keeps breaking down or whatnot. But the, the trucks that were listed again, that was through the last budget year. Um, that was within the capital plan to, to be replaced. So I didn't add that, but I just said, okay, because I looked at it and I saw how old the truck and I asked them about it. And the trucks are the trucks are old and they're starting to, to show it. They have mechanical issues and whatnot. So that's the reason why they're they're up there. All three of them. Yes. Okay. I think what, they're what, old. What they're being used for now? What are they being used they're, for? Those they're, trucks. They're they're being used to to work, but they do have problems. The air conditions constantly go out on them. They start breaking. They have they have mechanical problems. They have issues with transmission. They have they have different issues when lights stay on. They, the check engine lights, things of that nature. It's, so like to me, we probably need to um, hire another mechanic or something. I'm 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 just saying. I noticed that. Um, when different departments come in here about vehicles, you want to throw a year at a vehicle. I think you told me you was in the military, so I can relate to you. When when I was in the military, those vehicles are old, but you pull PMCSs on those vehicles to keep those vehicles up in, in, in service. And so it sounds like to me, 10-year-old truck, I mean, it's just a 10-year-old truck. That means if you do the PMCS on that, for anybody who don't know what that is, that's preventative maintenance checks and services, then that truck will last longer than 10 years. I'm just saying, you just can't come up in here and say you need a truck because it's old and the air condition is not working. You take it to the to the, to the mechanic and make sure that he service it, it right and make sure he service it when it needs to be serviced. Okay. So the trucks, they have they have issues. They have mechanical problems. We have two mechanics. Those mechanics have vacation. They spend almost 70, 70 to 80% of their time working on sanitation vehicles. Then the other time they're working on mowers and whatnot. Can, they, can the trucks get brought up and fixed? Sure, they can get brought up and fixed and we can take that truck that's raggedy, that looks raggedy, looks raggedy, going down the road. It has a Avon Park sticker on the side of it. And it it's not a good representation. And then at the same token, this you're talking about the, the employees, right? So we have we put employees in these trucks that are hot, they don't work, the AC constantly breaks. We're looking at, at the at the extrinsic motivators, right? For the, the motivation for employees. And there's they're they're working in trucks that are super old. And and they and then they see an employee in a good truck and they're like, how come? Our supervisor isn't fighting for us to get a better truck. And we got this because one that's council constant. because the council didn't approve it. That's what you can tell them because the council didn't approve it. Jason, me and you already done talked about all these vehicles I see riding around town. I ain't never seen so many new vehicles riding around in town, riding around doing nothing. I every stop sign, every red light I come to, I see a city truck riding around. And I, I came to the conclusion, I, and me and you had that discussion, that if you're doing that much riding around, you can't be working. I'm fighting for them, but if you want to strike it and strike it from it, uh, strike it from it. And they won't get the trucks, and they can just have old trucks. And 
in your opinion, can you live without any of these trucks this year? Yeah, I can, sure. It, w- sure, it, we can push. We can push the the trucks. Well, in the priority range of these three, which would you say is the most important to least important? I think the flatbed, the F two fifty diesel flatbed, is the most. Yes. Okay. Do you yeah. have any idea what we we have to pay as far as maintenance right now to fix these ve- vehicles? Depends on what it is. Like there's a truck that was a 2018 and it just had an issue with the, the motors, one of our techs and the truck looks good, but now it's going to be out of service. I think it's for like $9,000 or $8,000, something like that. $8,000 to repair it. It's going to be out for quite some time. Um, but, and we're, the, we don't have a ton of, tra- it, it may seem like we have, we have a lot of employees, mm-hmm. but the, the amount, we're actually short on some of our trucks. I have employees asking me for trucks. I say, like, I can't assign a truck to every single employee. You know, you got to ride with some people. Right. But um, but I understand where you're coming from. And I, I took exa- yeah. what you said. Yeah. And I, under- I understand. And, and I pass that along. I pass the writing. And and, and it's a it's a gripe of mine. So I, I check in. Hey, what's going on? I've seen you here a couple of times. You know where you where you headed to, or I'll ask the supervisor, and they'll tell me. Um, but it's it's uh it's on a schedule. Most most fleets are on a schedule. You you determine eight years, ten years. Some it's like okay, if it's a it's a regular pickup truck, then just because of it may be five to seven years, you cycle it through. You're getting another truck, and it comes in, and and that's how you do it. Or you say okay, it has a utility service body on it. Well, let's try to push that a little bit longer, mm-hmm. and then you push it out to ten, you know, um, ten years, twelve years. But you start getting fourteen, sixteen. It's it's extensive, but I'll uh, I'm willing what whatever the council decides, and I'll take that back to the to the, our team and say this is where we're at. This is what we were approved for. I would assume that you know some of the larger municipalities probably have a you know a cost percentage based schedule that you know once a vehicle starts costing. X right, percentage of its value, thinking. then yeah. that's when they get rid of it. You know, some type of a program like that. Yeah, we don't have a fleet. We don't have a fleet supervisor. Right. We don't have a fleet department. Yeah. There's plenty. You go in there. They got work orders, like you're saying, PMCS. You go in. Hey, my my vehicles do every three months. It goes in. It gets checked. It gets so and so. It's that that all that software. There's not a lady sitting like that's not right. Karen. She's she's doing bills. She's doing solid waste. She's doing different things. That right now we don't have a full blown fleet department. I they the mechanics report to me, and my biggest thing is that eighty percent of the time they're working on solid waste vehicles. So the other stuff we're usually playing catch up. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would love to be proactive. I would love to have the PCMS, but unfortunately, just the way we're at, we're almost re- reactive. Where the employees are told check your oil, check everything. Let's try to. It's not everything on you know grease your equipment. Not everything's on the mechanics. But sure, you know, it's it's we don't we don't have a window out there where someone's coming in and checking in and they're logging in the mile and all that. It's we're not there yet. Maybe we, one day, but that's where we are. If I may, we did implement this year um, a project number for each vehicle so that we can track. So we implemented that. We'll have more information probably next year when we have a full that year. And for very that. helpful. Sure. Yeah. All right, so we've heard one council person. We've got four more. What else do us say? I wouldn't be opposed to one this year. Maybe so, revisiting it next year. The one he said the he he probably could use this year. Purchasing the one vehicle be yes. item number three. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? I agree with that. Do one now, then do another one, then do another one. Well, I can I can assure you next year there'll be sure. more on the list, and yeah. then the next year after that will be more on the list. That's you know I. I don't feel that Jason is arbitrarily out there asking for random equipment that they don't need. You know, I, I've seen him make some pretty good decisions thus far, and I, and I trust him that if he says he needs it, then he probably needs it. I would be in favor of, you know, maybe cutting one vehicle just because we do have a very tight budget this year. We are taking a lot from reserves, and I'm sure next year is probably not going to be much better. So we definitely need to tighten our belt as much as possible. So... I mean, the two oldest ones are number three and number five, but I don't know if that necessarily equates to which ones break down the most. I think we can push four. 
probably better. Okay. Push four and then keep three and five. I'd be in favor of that. So, well, I, I have one question though. What about hiring an extra mechanic? That's going into um, the solid waste presentation we're talking about. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so we have two in favor of three and five. Yes. Anyone else? I would be fine with both of those as far as the age of the vehicles. We have three. Anyone else? I'd be in favor of four. You want four? Of leaving out four, you mean? Getting rid of four? No, meaning getting four. So he said that number three is the top priority that he okay, has. Then three is the top, then I'll be in favor of that one. Okay. okay. Anyone else for three and five? You're also making the employees a lot happier and easier and more work productive too if they're in a vehicle that works properly. Well, regardless, there's been three yeses for three and five. So we'll move on and X item number four. So we've got uh, timekeeping software and more replacement program. And then six through 12. Does anyone have any questions about those items? Um, I just have a one about, hang on. Oh, that's not this one. Never mind. That's something else. Okay. One, two, or six through 12. Any questions? The mower replacement program we already have in place, right? Yes. We do. I thought we had already discussed it and we were moving forward with it. Yeah. That's I thought we were just continuing, you know, going along with that one. Right. I would be fine with doing that. Okay, well, who's in yeah. favor of doing items 1 through 12 with the exceptions of 3 through 5? The, the only question I had was about number 9, why we would um, pay for that one versus trying to get one of the FERDAP grants for that, since it's 150000 MLK field improvements. They may pay for it. The reason why, is just I've I seen it, and I they, they told me about it. The field is really lumpy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long it will take with this. Maybe it can get put into the program that we have. Because um, they there's it's just supposedly, from what I understand, waiting on a signature uh, already out there. Um, maybe that's utilized for that. And then we not do something else. But to me, that's one of the biggest needs is that. Plus, I, I took a look at some uh, being out there watching some of the games and watching the kids play. I think there's some other, what was listed in the capital improvement plan and the description, I think we can do some other things that are cost effective mm -hmm. and I may be able to do all that plus get that, get that money. I mean, the worst come to worst. I do, no matter what, I want to get it done just because of the safety of the kids. Uh, it's, it's a bad, the field is very lumpy. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah. So to be clear, you want to do it with or without grant funding you're saying? If I can get it done with it, then that's fine. There's that's already has uh, 200, 200 match. Is yeah. that accurate? So, and I think some of the work that was stated in there, I found some contract pricing, but also I think I could utilize existing infrastructure and just put a canopy. I just, which, um, if you're familiar with the field, there's concrete to the side. I just have to see how thick it is to make sure I can put a canopy over that. Cause I was out there this weekend, just everyone had a pop up tent all around the field. Nobody really wants to sit in the bleachers because they all wanted to be underneath the tents. So, so, uh, but yeah, I think, um, I, I actually I, know, uh, kids that play in that field and a coach and they have the same consensus that you do about the quality of that field and the safety. And I always go with safety first. I mean, if, if we don't spend it, it can go back with, then we don't need it. I mean, if it's there, good, we use it. I just don't want to go and have another, um, year with something that may happen do, do you feel feel that you can fix the i yeah i think i think with the four, we're already getting with four hundred thousand, if we have four hundred thousand and everything's good to fix a field i feel like i can do that i feel like i can do it if we can change the scope of the yeah i have to see that i haven't yeah. we're supposed to have that meeting go over that but to, to okay. see if the, if we can do that because i don't know if that was already approved through that FERDAP grant um, Mayor, I have a question. Jer Jason, what was done to number nine this year? That's that's what we're talking about. Yeah, but what was done to it already this year from January into now? What was done? And the reason why I'm asking, because the last year budget, we talked about pavilions and all of that, and I ain't seen none of that yet. And we talking, we on another budget. Waiting on a signature. I'm sorry? Waiting on a signature. Okay. And so my next one is with the 50000 with the... Um, 
I mean, Mike White, what what are you going to do there with 50,000? Resur resurface the courts and probably put new basketball goals in there. You mean and then the court? Resurface, resurface the court uh -huh. and, and do um, just uh, do new basketball goals, likely. There was some security measure or something. Additional. Yeah, there's uh, there's some there's some live, but there's also monies coming in from also with uh CRA. with the CRA funding. Okay. And but I don't I don't expect that to be that. From what the internal discussions, I don't see that as being that much. Okay. My last question is number twelve. What are you going to do to that parking lot and basketball court? The reason why I'm asking because I look at number eleven and I look at twelve. It's hardly anybody up there at 12, but it seems like you want to put more money up there. There most, when I'm going to say most, if you have to compare the two, you're going to have many more at number 11 than you are going to 12. But yes, there's still, you putting 65 at the one that hardly ever anybody there. Yeah, I think that's for a reason. Wow. So, and I, I, and I went out and I spoke to, I spoke to someone yesterday actually about it. And they say, yeah, much, many more people would come here. I'm trying to put, put the two pickleball courts and put a, a modified basketball court. That's not so long. I went out and I took a picture. I seen the other day where some, uh, where the churches are off of um, a little bit North of cool and Cobb. I'm trying to remember if it was that forest or something that road there, but there's a church and there's a basketball court. There's like 20 something people out there playing, but I think it was on a church church property. So uh, when I went over and I talked to the gentleman, I say, hey, would you play? I say, yeah, and I, many, many more people would play. I say, yeah, probably including me, I'd go out there and play. If it's a nice court, good surface right now, it's a, ass, it's a half court. It's got valves in the thing. The, the surface is it's not good. It's got a curb right behind the goal. So if you go do a layup, you're going to trip and fall into the fence. It's just it's not, a, it's not a good setup. What I would propose is go in there, uh, resurface that. And, and utilize it, making something look really nice that's already set up with a restroom, uh, some lighting, parking, everything else, like all the infrastructure there. So that's like something that's really quick that we can take care of, something that we brought up. Um, I believe when I put the presentation and showed exactly, I think what I think you were, were you you weren't here that for that presentation. So that one, um, it all fit in there. And I think it would look great. You would ride down. You would see people out there playing, sitting. Uh, I think it would be a good look for the city. That's why I proposed it. Really, originally, wasn't even my idea. Someone said, hey, why don't you do that there? It has everything there. And I said, wow, light bulb went off my head. So why not? It's cheaper. It seems like a quick, quick hitter and get it done. And I don't have to go and try to figure out uh, drainage calculations. There's already a retention pond. All I'm doing is modifying it. And then I can make it look a little bit uh, nicer with some uh, landscaping aesthetics. And I think it'd look, uh, look incredible. How much parking will you have in there for that? I don't remember. That's why I'm asking. I think there's, I think there's something like 50, 45, 50 spots and remaining there'll still be like, like 25, 30, somewhere, somewhere around those lines, but enough that people want to go visit the park. They can plus we keep all the handicapped parking to the North side of the, the lot. We can keep all that there. And Jason, number 10, Memorial Field Press Box. That's the head, head field? No. Where is that at? It's a memorial field. It's, it's in the MLK. It's the football field. The press box inside. They don't have, yeah, their speakers don't work. They're, you know, usually you can hear them, hey, uh, Sammy, 15-yard run, whatever, the whole deal gets everyone. I mean, I was surprised how many people are out there. If I had to guess, there's probably 800 people out at that park this past Saturday. And as many things that we talked about CRA getting visitors in the people that came in from um, wherever the point Sienna, like the, the amount of people that we get in here, I was surprised. I was shocked. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was packed. So the visitors that were getting in here and I, and I said, man, this is, this is, I thought the baseball was big, but the football's big too. So looking at all this, this is just how we can make that that much better. And they're asking me for it. And I'm trying to, you know, hey, maybe you come over here and sit in the crowd and, and have, be a champion for the cause. But uh, but I, I think everything up here is is reasonable. We will try to seek out. I was talking to Danielle for the Central Lab and see what we can do with a with a grant, I guess, our pack mm -hmm. and see what we can do there. So I think that would be something. And from what I understand, is modifying existing 
parks, existing parks, which that's a park. So we modify it. I think it'll be uh, relatively um, not cheap, but you know, low cost versus starting from scratch. Certainly be quick. Yes, so, certainly so, quick. So Melody, does it look better if we leave these items in the budget when we are going out and seeking these grants because it looks like we're serious about it? Yes. So even though we are putting these in here as, as we see them now, we're still looking for additional funding to pay instead of. Always. But if we do not have them in here, then that kind of disqualifies us from some of those not grants. disqualifies, but you get points okay. towards the application. Good question. Okay. Good question. Okay. All right. We had a lot of discussion. Is anyone in favor of keeping all the items? Yes. With the exception of three and five. Right. All right. We've already we've already covered three, four, and five. Six through twelve, yes. So we one, two, and six through twelve. Not keeping four. Okay. I'm fine with that. We've got two. Who else? I'm okay with it. All I right. Counting me already or not? Did not. Okay. The Bernice. I, I didn't quite get which numbers you were saying. Well, so we've already covered three, four, and five. So we're only discussing one, two, six through twelve. Everything yes. except three, four, five. Yes. Okay. All right. You've got your consensus there. Answer is yes. Uh, so you said on on three, four, five, just to make sure. It, were we just leaving out four, and we right. had three and five? Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. All right. Looks like we're down to millage rate. Is that right? So we need a consensus for the tentative budget. Okay. So the budget was presented at five mils. Yes. And we, we put on the trim notice six. Okay. So this will really be, you know, after we, when we get to the tentative and the final budget hearings, mm -hmm. we should be making no changes. So we should decide tonight where you want to be with the millage rate. Okay. Is anyone opposed to keeping it at five as presented? At five, how much should we take out of reserves? 1,074,360. Yep. And that'll cover everything? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. And hopefully a lot less because Jason's going to get some grants. <laughs> okay. And my analyst. Yes. <laughs> And what? And his analyst. And my analyst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm good with five. I'm okay. We've got two. Yes. I think Jim Mark said yes. I'm fine as well. Okay. Okay. You got your consensus. Five it is. Okay. All right. <clears throat> is it infrastructure? Yes, we're on to infrastructure. So all of the with all the capital that we have in there, we will take two point. 2,736,320 out of reserves. And that will still leave us with 4.8 million in reserves. So okay. any questions on that before we get going? No. no. Seeing none, continue. Um, Chief really went through all of these um, before with the exception of the ALS information, um, the police vehicles, that's per our contract. We can't change that. So I don't know if you want to go through each one of these individually as well. Um, nobody's uh, has an issue with items one through four, right? No. Police vehicles, fire hydrant replacement, radios, and bunker gear. It's so all been gone over. I just have a question about number one. I know it's on the, the contract, but... Mm -hmm. So the, the police vehicles that we're increasing that much, is that going to be an addition to like their additional cars in this area or? We buy them police vehicles every year. We buy them police vehicles. Yeah. For only our area. That's, or do they that's, use That's them? the idea, but they, they're they the general vicinity. I thought it was $100,000. No, sir. It never, it never was It was a couple of years back. About two it, or three years ago, it increased yep. to that level. I got a question for Chief. Number three. Chief, did we buy radios last year? Yeah. So we bought a bunch of radios a long time ago, probably 12 or 13 years ago. And they have a general sort of lifespan of about 10 years. They started breaking last year. So this was kind of put in to replace a few of those radios that are breaking. So these radios are designed to go into 
uh, atmospheres that you don't want stuff to explode because you're walking around with a radio. So they are pricey radios. Why are they breaking? Well, they're just past their service life. So when they get to a point, when they go to re repair them, uh -huh. we pay, I don't know, 800 to $900 to repair them. And they come back not intrinsically safe, which then gives you the the uh, unsafe feeling that if you did walk into an environment with, let's say, gas, that that radio is no longer intrinsically safe. It could ignite that gas. Okay. So, so I'm sorry. The radio we, we ordered last year, they're not breaking. Correct. No, they're not. They're, we're just replacing radios that are about 12 to 13 years old that oh, are breaking. Okay. So we're on a little program for kind of cycling through. In, a, in about another year or two, we will probably stop buying three radios. We just have not bought radios in about 12 years. So all of those radios are really old and they're not serviceable. So we're just replacing our radios. These are radios that the firefighters carry on their person every day, right? Correct. Yeah. So you get a lot of wear and tear abuse as you're... Yeah, they're they're really durable radios. Okay. Um, but yeah, everybody has their own assigned, which is a safety kind of a thing. Because if somebody goes missing or needs help, you don't want them relying on somebody that might have gotten lost in another room. So everybody gets their own radio with their own designated number and their own emergency feature, all that kind of stuff. And so these radio go into a fire. Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions on one through four? Yes, sir. Items five through eight. Any questions? We've gone extensively over the ladder truck. It can find space equipment. We've gone over training dummy and remodeling the bathroom shower. Any questions on those items? No, I have any now. Okay. I have none. All right. Item number nine, the imager for the ladder truck. We also went over that. Yep. Anyone opposed? Nope. No. All right. The vitals monitor. Uh, we went back and forth on that quite a bit. Any further questions? I guess my question is I know the guys have to have training to use it and all that kind of good stuff. So are we ready at this point to actually purchase the monitor? All right, should so, we handle, handle the training part first? So this is the whole, uh, this monitor is required for ALS. So if if the council does not want to do ALS, we wouldn't need this monitor. But to answer your question about the training, the idea, so my timeline is, if you guys approve to do this and to budget the money, that we would be purchasing, this, purchasing the equipment in October. So October, November, December, maybe into January because of the holidays. Those three to four months, we would be doing training with everything that we need, you know, the county, the people that sold us to it, all that, that we would be doing that training for those four months and not really starting the actual delivery of ALS service till around January, February. Now, that's a that's a rough timeline that we could be saying January 1st, we're ready. But to go with your point, we're going to purchase the equipment in October and then start training for the next couple of months to make sure that we know how to use it before we're putting it on the truck to start the service. And Chief, you said that we're the only one in the county that would be doing it at this point? Well, we are the only fire department right now. So we have ALS ambulances that drive around. There's nine ambulances that the county has. There are no other fire trucks. Now, the county is trying to do it currently. They're trying to do it for the county. The city of Sebring, we've had several meetings on this. So the city of Sebring, I think, is about a year behind us. I think they're going to start it next year. And that's really because we're in kind of a slightly unique thing that we have three paramedics already on staff. Yeah. Now, we don't have the equipment. We don't have the licensing for them to practice, but we have them already available. Searing, I think, only has one. So they need another year or two to really train some more people before they can start. So I have a little packet here that I can give you guys when we go that kind of goes through and explains some of this stuff. But I went back two years and are now again we don't have paramedic programs. So I, I'm going to use this term. We have people that are trained as medics that were here 80% of the time last year without a paramedic program at all. So my goal with this is to, when we do implement this, and I've talked about training, you know, a few more for the next three years, like one per year, that would give us six. And I think we'd be able to do it a hundred percent of the time, but yeah, we would be the first ones if we were to start this in October, the County is attempting to start it. Um, ALS engines is what most people call it. Um, and I think the city of Seaburn will be doing it next year. So do you know how long the licensing would take to get? I, I think that I would be able to do that on that same three months. And I we have, have every other requirement other than this well, ALS monitor? No. I mean, we have 
we have uh, the only thing we're really missing is in this budget, there's stuff, you know, a couple thousand dollars for what I'm calling consumables, needles, drugs, all that kind of stuff. So we would need that. Um, and then we would need the licensed stuff, which I think I can do in probably a month and a half. The only reason I'm asking is because it says this ACLS monitor only usually lasts about eight years. So well, like once we purchase it, I want to be ready to okay. go get all the goodie out. So that's sort of a misleading. They what they say is when we produce it, when we stop producing it, this is a better way to say it. When they stop producing that, whatever that item is, that monitor, they will only service the service life we talked about of other items. It only has a service life of eight years. So a good, a better way to describe this to you is there, this monitor that we're looking at is replacing an old monitor. That monitor they still manufacture right now. Now they might manufacture it for eight more years. I don't think they will. I think they're going to stop producing that probably next year because they have this new fancy version out. When they stop producing that next year, that monitor will still be serviceable for eight more years. So eight years is what they tell you its serviceable life is but it you could have a monitor for 20 years and it not and it, it still be working if that makes sense eight years is the number that they give you for the service that life. they're promising to give us replacement yeah. parts and so on and so forth and and also they they kind of take in like like national um statistics you know most places these monitors aren't making it last you know past 10 or 12 years now when you say that they say, well, if you have a smaller department that takes care of things, you might get 15, 20 years out of it. But some places, Chicago, maybe they're only lasting seven years. You know, they're just, they have so many more people out there doing these things that get a little more abuse. But I, I think ours will last longer than 10 years. Now, again, this this is what we're hearing from them, eight to 10. But and so this monitor, though, still will not allow you to dispense medications or anything like that. Just remind me one more time. Yeah. So it, it doesn't, it doesn't, dispense medication it gives you the information for you to see what's going on to then dispense what or treat that problem so the licensing would allow us based on the information that this monitor gives us it would allow you guys to dispense medications at that point correct yes okay and you're not going to do narcotics that's the idea yes okay so the question is do we want to move forward with that this year do we want to push it what do we want to do I'd like to move forward with it. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Too. We have three yeses. Looks like we're moving forward. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. 11 and 12, we got latitude tablets and ice machine. Any opinion? Um, I do have a question about that ice machine. Where where is that going to be in in the in one of the bays? Yeah, in the bay. Our current ice machine. I don't really know the age of it. It's it's pretty old, but it has several problems. So it apparently um, has two different sides that make ice. One side they're saying is not serviceable, and and then the, also the bin itself is separating from the outside, so water is able to get down inside of the machine where you don't want water to sit. So we've had that thing for probably 15 years. We tried to fix it, and they're just telling us it's beyond repair. So is it only the fire department that has access to that? Um, I mean, that's uh, yes and no. I mean, it sits in the fire station, but we we give people ice quite frequently. Oh, okay. People ask. We're, we're not. Uh, I'm not opposed. I was just asking if that was exclusively to your department or were other departments free to come by and use it also? Oh, I mean, they can, but it's not. it's not – big enough. I mean, it's not big enough for every department to come by. We we generally empty that ice maker every morning because we fill all of our trucks, you know, coolers on the truck. So they're generally emptying that thing every morning. Then it takes, you know, a couple hours to refill. So, so it's, it's not, not a very really big machine. It's no. not a very big machine then. Yeah, it, it's like the size of that podium right there. It's it's, it's not huge. Small so yeah. what are you going to do with it, Chief? I mean, it's still working. It's still producing ice. And so if we give you a new one, what are you going to do with the old one? Well, the old one would just go to the dumpster. It even doesn't. Though we, even though we use it, it's still working. Well, it's only half working. Only half. Working. It's only half producing is right it, now. Is it producing ice? It's producing ice right now, but it also collects water where it shouldn't be collecting water. 
inside of the like the sides of the machine is holding water. And then it gets moldy, moldy and, and nasty. Contaminating. Okay. So yes, no, what's I'm fine with both of those. Um, got the, it. the tablets. Um yeah. cheese. That's they just regular tablets for the office? No, so these are going to be tablets on the truck. On so the truck. Yep. So when we, this is going to be used for multiple things. Everything, as you are aware, is going electronic. You know, we have these huge books. I don't even have a book big enough. Uh, these books are probably that big that we keep on the trucks with all of our, what we call pre-fire plans for buildings. We're required to go through and pre-fire fire plan buildings so that when we arrive, we have an idea of what we're walking into a little bit, a little bit better. And you only um, need two. Well, that's what we're starting with. We think two will be a good start and we think we'll be able to work with two for a little bit, but yeah. Two. Okay. All right. In favor? favor. Yes. 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 All right. Moving forward with items number 11 and 12. Keep in mind, we are on page number 18 of 71. So we need to get moving. <laughs> so these, the infrastructure for the street improvements, sidewalks and curbs and stormwater, that's in the five-year CIP. So there's no need to, to revisit those. Same with the FERDAP grants. Okay. This is the CDBG fund uh, budget summary that just shows the money coming in and the expenses going out. The CRA fund budget, that's the same. Um, we'll go into more depth on that at the joint meeting. Okay. As she's going through here, if you have any questions, just please pop up with it. I have one question. Have we ever considered going to a 10 years therapy plan? It's never been discussed, but I don't. It wouldn't hurt to do that. I don't see why not. I think the um, charter says five years is required. Right. Well, maybe we should consider 10 in the future. Something to talk about in the future. Okay, let's move on. Water sewer fund budget, um, the bottom right-hand side with all the capital and after return on investment will be taken 8177610 dollars out of reserves, which will leave us a fund balance of about 3.8. Jason, do you want to discuss uh, how we might be able to not take $8 million from reserves through grant funding? Yes, we're, uh, we're actively moving along trying to trying to get our station up and running but we also are we are putting out trying to get money from from the state for different projects that, that we're doing they are funding the they're doing more for the upgrades to meet the nutrient requirements and then we're doing the actual repairs i mean we can still try to get some of those things but if we don't you know we, we don't want to be in a, a case where uh, stuff starts breaking we don't want the uh, equipment to start breaking because of bearings going bad and again this has been put off for two years as as given two years ago and things are starting to break and now it's time to fix it and that's what we have you know good thing about enterprise fund we're able to stack money and then spend it when we have to spend it and this is the time we have to spend it we'll do our best to push forward and see what else additional Funding we can get there, but we are going after eleven, uh, what the eleven point five million to to make our plant better. Okay. Any questions? No. All right. Please proceed. You guys have any questions about what we went over in the past? We would just like to express to you to please get those grants. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we we'll do every we'll do what we can to maximize the dollar and move forward. Please proceed. So we so we discussed um those were already discussed. So yeah. if you guys are good with them, they're already included in the budget. Okay. As are five through seven. Okay, we're good with that. Number 25 now. This is the airport fund budget. Um, this could change, probably will, if the um, 
AIPP goes through, it'll be a lot smaller, but we'll revise it at that point. Any questions on airport fund? No. Okay. Sanitation fund? Sanitation fund budget. We've got a whole presentation on that coming up next, so we can discuss that um, next. Okay. And then do we want to schedule another budget meeting um, to go over the changes that were made, or do you guys want me to just prepare it for the tentative? What do you think, guys? I feel right. like Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. I, I'm just, I won't be here on the 23rd. I'll be out of town. So, I mean, if everybody else doesn't mind, I'd like to kind of attend the uh, September 9th meeting. I think this is, she was talking about even a, an additional one on September 3rd. She's talking about one on the 3rd. Oh, the, the to the go third. For okay. I thought changes. you're talking about the, yeah, the third. So the, the tentative budget hearing and the final budget hearing are those two dates. They're just set in stone, right? Set in stone. Correct. Okay. So there is no changing those two dates. Right. We're only talking about the. September 3rd. I'd just like to make a note on September 3rd, and this was going to come up during city council, but we may need to have a special meeting already uh, concerning the AIPP and the record of decision. Okay. So I'll provide more detail on that, but I'm cautious to set September 3rd as a date just because we already might need that. Can we not do both at one, one time? Um. Well, when you're doing a special meeting, it has to be on that that oh, item. Okay. So the record of decision, okay. I would need to have it signed before September 5th if it actually goes through. And that's why we're pushing to have that September 3rd meeting. But do you feel like we need to meet on the 3rd to talk about the same stuff that we talked about tonight? Or can we just go to the 9th? Because you wouldn't be presenting any additional information. We would just be, it's a formality. We're just going to be passing what you've already discussed oh well then because some of the stuff we've already discussed mm -hmm. twice so right <laughs> then yeah i don't i don't think we need one okay. i'm fine with just going to the straight to the night in yeah. my opinion yeah. agreed okay that's it all right so utility rate fee schedule recommendations Fault. What time do we usually call that for the meeting? Um, yes, yeah, so this will be different. If they're talking about the AIPP. No, I mean on the ninth. We're going to go right for the budget. I don't think it'll be a four o'clock meeting. It'll be a hey, Jason. Okay. Okay. Do you have your presentation? Is it the one that? It's in uh, Share Drive. You want to get it off the Share Drive? And the council meeting items. Can you get that? No, that's uh the solid waste solid waste folder. Okay. So uh we and a couple months ago, we went over some of the issues that we're experiencing, spoke about a couple of different options that were in front of us. It was uh, recommended that let's take a comprehensive look, come back to you with recommendations, and that's where we are. So next slide, please. So garbage collection. I think uh, we keep that how it is, two pickups a week. Same thing that we're doing. And if someone asks for an additional can because they need it, then we just charge them uh, the $15, but we don't go in and charge them the additional amount that you'll see coming up. I don't know what's going on with that there, but it doesn't look like that on my end. But uh, so service recommendations, bulk waste. And what you see, it's um, the, the biggest difference that we have in front of us is that I want to separate uh, the bulk waste and the yard waste from being the same week. It's it's done like that by the county. And to be honest with you, it's 
it's really difficult to try to make up if something happens, you pick up on a, a bulk waste on a Thursday and a Friday and you don't get it. And then it just sits there and people don't can't really understand what it's like for the next week. And the only reason I didn't go full blown into information campaign is because I knew I was going to be coming back here in front of the council to, to go over this. So what we're one thing we're we're also um, adding is that instead of doing the two cubic yards, which is a relatively small amount, we're going to four cubic yards. Let's go up a little bit. Let's get something to where if you get a couch and you get something else, it's it's generally close. We're going to we're going to pick it up now. If you just took your whole house and put it outside, that's a different story. We'll end up coming back to you and giving you a fee. So. As you see there, it's uh, no longer picked up the same week as yard waste. It's going to be Monday and Tuesday, all right? So Monday and Tuesday. If for some reason we can't pick it up, and then I'll then I'll have them either someone come in on Wednesday to come get it, or I can do Thursday and Friday. That way we get it we get it all picked up that week, and everyone will know when they see yard waste or or uh, bulk waste. Now the four cubic yards. It's where if they have an additional, it still be the ten cubic yards over the the four cubic uh, four cubic yards. So say you you go out and you put a decent amount, ten cubic yards, you're only going to get charged sixty dollars. Um, one of the things that we had on here is the multifamily communities. One of our biggest problems that we have in the city of trying to control is multifamily communities, and not necessarily for track. Tra um, your trash collection, which is, you know, like what comes out of your house, but more or less for people throw furniture and everything else. We can't, it's just a free for all. So what we're trying to do is say, I looked at the code. I went over it multiple times. You know, if that falls on the responsibility of the person who's there at the property, if someone comes over and dumps it out there in front of city hall, then that's going to be ours. They dump it in front of the public works facility. We're going to end up having to pick it up. If they dump it in front of your house and then it's that's, you know, you can call illegal dumping, but we're going to have to come out there and come pick it up. So it's putting the onus where on the the person who's there, the property owner, because some of just and one was, yeah, I've seen many people that are just taking it across the street or putting it other parts of the property and they're saying, oh, that's illegal dumping. When I've seen that, that's not the case. It's them just dumping it. And not following the rules. So what I'm what I'm stating is, is that we we do that by um, a pickup where they have to make an appointment. They call in, they make an appointment, they come pick it up. This is unit fifty three or whatever it is. So we're gonna put our stuff out there, okay? That way we make sure our truck goes over there and picks it up, and we could take care of it. Uh, if for some reason the, um, it's someone like a community just consistently putting it out there. And they have 10 residents and someone goes and dumps eight yards of debris and just puts it out there and they're over whatever that additional, you know, that, that amount that they're going to turn around and, and get a bill, but it's going to be spread throughout the, the property owners within there and say, you, you know, you guys have to police help us because we, we, we can't go out there, find everyone who's doing this. And, and, and I'm sure the council is aware of many of the areas that where this is taking place. So usually when this is the case, you do a, an appointment, you set it up, we know who it is, we go over there and pick it up. And people will get the understanding of how this works. I can do a massive information campaign, but this helps us out. There's other areas where there's houses and it's not, it's not a, a multifamily community where it's, it's one HOA. Each person has their house and it's turned sideways and they just go dump it out there. So, and those are some of our worst areas and they'll throw whatever they'll throw tires and we just can't, we can't figure it out. So we just been kind of eating it, going out there and picking it up, picking it up, but that's costing us. It's costing us a lot. And plus the, the area is looking really bad. So the goal is to get it clean, but be able to assign the cost in our code. It states that if you have that on your property and we go pick it up, we're going to put it on your water bill. That just add, gets added. It doesn't say we have to go through all the, you know, with the, with the tags. And there's one thing that states that, you know, you can give the warning, but we've been out warning plenty of people and we'll still go, go forward and say, this is what you can do. But 
we want to make sure the area is cleaned up. It is the city of charm. We do want to make sure it looks good. But if it's there, then and Lee goes out, whatever we do pick up and we charge, we'll have to have a picture assigned, a, a, a date stamp, the whole deal in order for that to be processed. I would not, if anyone comes to me and says, hey, they got charged and we didn't have that picture on file with a date stamp and everything else, then then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go through with the charge. But if it's a date stamp and the back and forth, then it's gonna get charged to whoever that property owner is or multiple. That way they can you see someone dumping in front of your house, you're gonna go out there and go tell them. Right now, someone dumps in front, they can they can care less and they just keep it moving. So um, just one real quick question. So if it's a multifamily um housing development or whatever, is it still are you still going to allow them four cubic yards per unit? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes, they call they call and say, hey, we have so, something to get picked up. Okay, place it out there at this time. We'll go pick it up. That way, if they go out there and they put buck cans of paint and everything else, then we get assign it to who who was putting it out there. And say, okay, apartment 35 will have their whatever uh, phone number and say, hey, you put this out there. This isn't allowed. You know, maybe we still take it, but we let them know. And then that way we can assign who's dumping out there. And we could also tell them, put it out there on this date. Don't put it out a week in advance and they sit there and then everyone who rides by says, hey, let's just throw it out. It looks bad. You know, trash, breach, breach trash. That's that's what happens. So um, now the that you see on there, let me see the, I think I had something on there, the Avon Park Housing Authority. So it's, they they, if they call in, and they want us to go out there and go pick that up. Like we were, we were making certain areas because we have more control over it than that's something that we can, we can handle the different scenario, but we can go create up set up areas where we go pick it up and we can proceed that route and still treat them in a little bit different manner. Okay. Um, uh, commercial establishments, a cart, uh, apartment complexes by appointment build per total cubic yards. So, uh, if it's, uh, what, whatever commercial, instead of them just trying to, cause those individuals as well, look for ways where they can throw that stuff off to the side. If they know that they can get it collected, you know, it's, we're still, let's say a money-making thing for us, but if we charge them, we're not losing money on it. So, and I think it's a good thing to pick it up and, and provide them that service because they're, they're a customer as well, not just a commercial staff, but they're, they're a customer. Next slide, please. On yard waste. So it's a, basically the, the, same, the same situation. The, the difference here is that um, – it's not supposed to be my bad. It's not supposed to be ten ten dollars. It's I put it to six dollars. I'm sorry with that. You'll see it in the other. Hopefully you see it in another. It's only six dollars per cubic yard. So if they go over, it's not as much because we're only paying two fifty to dump it. So this is just like a carrying fee. So if someone has ten yards and they go over, you know, that's six yards over, then they're they're only going to pay thirty six dollars the instead of uh, sixty or. Yeah, sixty dollars for that. So this is the same way as the other. All right. There's there's no this is a Monday and Tuesday as well. It's the same, same setup. Next slide, please. So this is something I brought forward before. These are some of the rates and what they charge. Avon Park being down at the $15 level. There's also other areas that are 14, you know, that for whatever reason, the agreement was $14, but, um, you know, Sebring 1875 and Highlands County 1865, only, uh, but only one pickup per week. So what we did, we took a look at our cost. I basically did a calculator. I put everything together, how much it's going to cost us currently, the, the actual cost and put everything together based off the budget. And that had a calculator and that calculator shot out a number on uh, next slide. And when it came out to the calculator, that's where we were. Um, the, and some of the reasons that the price increased, we've had, we've had to um, go into the general fund to uh, help out the solid waste fund and you know, something we don't like to do. It's an enterprise fund, it's supposed to support itself, but because of close to a million dollars over the last three years of revenues being 
uh, under the expenses, this is where we're at. Now we have a, a fleet that's almost six years old where, uh, you know, it's talking to solid, the solid waste supervisor plus uh, Chrissy and I were in a, another meeting and uh, the, the one of the, it's a high level meeting and they stated, yeah, our, our trash trucks only last five years. And that's pretty much to going. And that's kind of what we all know. So our, the age of our fleet six. So now we're in a little catch up mode. Had this been a couple of years ago, maybe I didn't push it up to where it is now, but um, just to what the cost is and what it's going to cost us to do business. It's going to be $22 per month. Um, and the other prices, the other prices are there. So to be clear, that $22 a month would allow you to continually buy the trucks at the right interval to keep them. Yes. Yes. We have a little bit of catch up to do. And then maybe if we get to a point, we see, you know, we're building some money. But right now we're we're at a negative. We're not even at a zero. So whether you pay for it at the for this or you're coming out of your general fund reserves, it's you're going to pay for it one way or the other. The operation is the operation. Uh, and and I'm I'm doing everything I can. What what's built into this? Uh, that position that I was selling you, even though we're closed, we're moving it over. So we're taking that salary and we're taking it out of there. We're we're um, we're going to be spending less on truck equipment for the person that was uh, running the landfill. And you know we got to go through that whole setup, but. That may only cost us. We budgeted in somewhere around twenty, just say a, a good number, twenty-two thousand a year, more or less, uh, for what it's going to cost us to for our landscaping debris. Where right now it's it's probably ninety, a hundred. You know, you put in employee costs and everything else, like all-in cost, is significant. Um, and when we get one of the machines that we're looking at getting. We're going to get the assisted side loader. So that truck right there does the work of three people. So one, one operator, one truck versus one truck, three, three people, um, you know, with the average, I guess the, the two additional employees are probably looking at maybe all in a 90,000, $80,000 a year for those additional employees to where you have the side loader that can do almost 250 more, about 250 homes more than that rear loader can do. Um, so we're looking at, you know, doing some uh, automation and, and getting uh, trucks in here that that can do the work, um, do it more efficiently. And what we're proposing next year is, uh, is, a, is a rear loader with two, with two side loaders because the rear loaders do assist with some of the, the, the bulk um, with the different collections of yard waste and whatnot for the smaller size piles, they go grab them and throw them in. That's why we decided to to do that. Maybe the next one after that, maybe grapple, depending on our size, how many more homes we bring in. And our, our revenue is going to be increasing as well. So that'll help us out. And next slide. If there is one. Okay, so uh, we went into, so we we did a, an increase on our commercial, and basically what we did was uh, a ten percent, basically ten percent commercial across the board, and that's the that's the numbers that you see in front of you there, minus the minus the bulk in yard debris. And you got a two yard, four yard, so that there is a like you see the rental fee. That's how much it is just to have the dumpster per month and then whatever the collection is. So if you see here, say you have a two yard dumpster with, with one collection, 14, that number that you see in front of you, that's going to be uh 51 99, right? So that's how much it would cost for that. And if you would just add additional, it would be the 14, 14 plus however many collections that they're, they're requesting. Can you, can you kind of go into why it, why it um, kind of grows exponentially as you go down versus rather just doubling. If it's $38 for one day, why is it not just double that? Which I know more trucks would probably be needed. More people would probably be needed, but there's a big jump, you know, from one day to, to five uh, days. Go to the next slide, please. If you don't mind. That's just where, that's where the current, where the current rates sit. 
So it is interesting why it jumps like that. So you would think if you're if you're picking up more from the same place, you're actually going to wind up picking up less garbage rather than more garbage. Right. Interesting. And I would like this to be on. I need to put this on the the website. So I would like this to be a little bit more visual for people to see how much it costs. Do you have any idea why it jumps so much? I don't. Lee, do you have any idea why it jumps? Not particularly, no. Um, it's, this, my, this is just what the rates were when I was, uh, when I got the position, this is what the rates were. Um, I never really looked into uh, the jumps or anything like that. But this is just what the rates were. So I don't know who had approved it in the past, but yeah, this is where they were. Well, I'd certainly like to know mm -hmm. if maybe we can look at why they are what they are and something we can do about it. So from what I'm what I'm seeing though, it's on on a one of my cheat sheets. Um. The calculations is you get like the uh, the first pickup, which is what thirties. Well, this is a different sheet. So what happens is that that one pickup per week, mm -hmm. the dumpster rental is added into it. There's your total. I'll come back to you on this. There's okay. some mistakes here. So, there's some mistakes on this. I have to come back to you on this. I apologize. No problem. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's it here. Uh, go go back to the two yard pickup. That's not right. All right. So I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over where it is right now. No, no, just go to the two yard, please. No, the back. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that didn't look right. Yeah, but. Okay, you going? I'll give you uh, an updated number. This was inputted wrong. I apologize. Bro. Next slide. Next slide. All right. I'm going to just give you the total charge, okay? Two yards. One pickup per week. And then you add 10% to each one of these numbers. One pickup's 49.70. Two pickups is 78.60. Three pickups is 109.15. Four pickups is 138.05. Five pickups is 167. So you add 10% to each one of those numbers. Next slide, okay. please. That makes more sense. That makes sense. That other didn't make sense. Oh, no. Did it go? Did it jump four, six? Can you go back one more? Okay, perfect. So on the four, four yards starting out, the the rental rate on that is twenty five seventy, pushing at uh ten percent. So that's gonna take it to like twenty eight dollars more or less. So the the pickup, the total charge is ninety one forty plus ten percent, one forty six, one ninety nine, two fifty two, and three oh six. The six yard. The rental thirty eight fifty five plus ten percent. That's one forty nine twenty two thirty seven sixty three twenty six four fourteen and five oh two. The eight yard is it's fifty one forty on the rental plus ten percent. The two it's uh, with the with the total for one pickups two oh five fifty plus ten percent 
3905, 452, 75, 576, 15, and $700. Apologize for that um, issue. And that's that. The, the, the increases that we're doing on the residential side, it's not when I originally did the calculation, it wasn't that. Um, extensive more or less uh the money like if we could have pushed commercial a little bit up to ease the burden on the the residents we would but it's not that much of an increase that would help us out and get us to where we need to be so um that's that's just where we are um you know i think 10 percent it doesn't it doesn't hurt that bad but um I think that puts us where we are because right now looking uh the rates that we have and the amount of commercial customers is is how many commercial customers do you think we have more or less it's like 40 50 okay so the 50 60 that we have the number is not drastic to where it's hardly even by paying for that front that front end loader which is what loads with the driver It's probably it's under it's under we're not we're not even with the tipping and how much we're paying we're really not even but just to make things work and that we we want to have that business there are places that push that out there are places that say hey commercial go talk to waste management republic whoever it may be you know and we're actually paying uh, that driver an extra hour overtime a day because sometimes he makes two trips to he makes two trips to the to the dump but it's not a money making thing for us it's you know i'd almost say if you want i'll take a look at it and see what it takes um and maybe we look to do something with that and just there's just one one spot it's up to you, though. Well, we certainly keep your eyes open for any way we can make changes. I mean, just the same notion that your other presentation, where it's an enterprise fund and needs to, you know, cover its own expenses. I mean, I, the same should apply. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I agree. Next year. Okay. Tweaking every year till we get it right. Yeah, I agree. So that's where we are. Um, we just, just, I know the fees are going. It that didn't. I don't believe those fees went into our budget, right? It's, it's proposed, so we're proposing them now, building up what we have, and then hopefully, uh, you know, if it gets passed, then it will. What we're charged will fund our operation. We have roughly was it four thousand garbage pickups, res residential garbage pickups in the city. It's so almost like almost six thousand. Six thousand. Got it. Any other questions while they're on it? When's the last time we had an increase on those rates? Do you have an idea? Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Okay. Been a while. Yeah. I think it's something we need to seriously look at. Yeah, I'm not uh building in to try to start stocking money in the bank and I'm just getting kind of getting by right now. Maybe in the future, as we're our fleet and how we can look at other ways to be more efficient, then we'll see what we can do from there. So homeowners are looking at like a seven dollar increase, but they get their garbage picked up between eight and ten times, depending on on the month, right? Four weeks versus sometimes about yeah, yeah eight roughly, nine or less, yeah, yeah, roughly. So not even a dollar more per pickup. Yes, and we're giving some more of the bulk and, and the yard debris and discounts on that as right. well. To make it because they had a point, uh, Vice Mayor Bernard had a great point where he said, hey, you know, you just put a little bit and you're already over the amount. So we looked at it and like, yeah. So you're trying what? to balance this. Yeah, time. we try to balance it. We're charging more, but we're going to provide more. And I think um, the whole goal is the reason why we're charging what we're charging is we want to provide a better service. So um, it's 
and I'll go into the mechanic part of the money that you saw there. We we did put a mechanic into that budget. So it's a mechanic that's more or less exclusively for solid waste, but working with solid waste with a little bit of assistance here and there from the regular mechanics. Um, but you know, we have the we have other things in the general fund that we have to look at. We have we have areas that we need to catch up. But that's the goal where we get in and hopefully we can find someone who specializes more with solid waste uh, trucks, those particular type of vehicles and does a good job because you have the seals that you have to keep up and and different things. And it's it's a labor intensive um, operation. Especially with tires and. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none. Please continue. That was it. So we have to go through the sanitation fund, which is pretty small. So I don't know. I now. There you go. All right, backing up to page number 44. Okay, so sanitation fund, um, of course, this does not include the rate increases that were just discussed. There is a new position that's being requested, the sanitation mechanic. So we'll need a consensus on that if you want to want me to keep that in the budget. Okay. Any opinions on the sanitation mechanic? The question was asked, why don't we hire another mechanic? They're trying to hire another mechanic. Is that what the council wants to do? Yeah. yeah I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Maybe we can yeah. get better control of the services of our view. Yes. There you go. I agree. Yeah. And it's also wash too. So it's taking one away and it's kind of it's zero, net zero. Okay. I'm good. You have your consensus. What else do you need from council in the next nine minutes? <laughs> well, we haven't looked at the sanitation budget at all, so I'm just gonna fly through it. Go you ahead. guys good with that? Go ahead. Okay, so with the expenses that are in there right now, we will beg, borrow, and steal eight hundred and ninety one thousand four hundred and thirty dollars to balance the budget. Okay. Our total san sanitation fund revenues come in at $1,650,500. That's an increase of 19,000. Sorry. Sure. Okay. The garbage revenue comes in at 1.4 million, which is an same as last year. The Crystal Lake garbage is budgeted at 86000 It's the same as last year. Tire pickups are budgeted at 4000 That's an increase of 500 I have a question about that. Mm -hmm. That's an increase of tires that you... That's just tires that you found, right? Or people have thrown out by the garbage. So they get four... Everyone gets... Um, each household gets four tires per year. So if there's additional... They saw the rate up there. We just charge them that. Um, if it's in front of their house, they get charged whatever that additional is on top of the four that they got for the year. So what is that addition? What is that addition amount? It's eight, right? Eight, eight dollars per tire. Yes. Okay. Uh, dumpster fees are budgeted at one hundred thirteen thousand five hundred. That's an increase of thirteen thousand five hundred. Overage fees were just implemented this year, so that's an increase of five thousand. Where do you need that? Uh, number ten, slide number ten. So if you guys have it in front of you, interest income is budgeted at 42000 which is the same as last year. I got to click it. The expenses for the sanitation fund are budgeted at $2,548,490. That's an increase of $564,700. One hundred and thirty-seven of that is um, directly related to personnel expenses, operating costs, 
increased $421,140. I don't know if you, we put an explanation in there. So if you guys are good with those explanations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the end. Very good. Any questions? No, sir. No. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, is there anything else for the good of the city? Mayor, I'm sorry, I Go had ahead. one for Mel uh, Melanie. Mm -hmm. Melanie, you went um, past the um, CRA screen kind of fast. And um, what was budgeted for each one of the so districts? That we will go over at the joint meeting with the CRA okay. advisory board. That's why I kind of went over that okay. for sake of time. Yes, Mr. which we do have uh, consensus from the CRA advisory board. They will be in attendance, the majority of them. Very good. Anything else for the good of the city? Mayor, just want to clarify, the, the council was fine with the charges being, if we see the, whatever the overage is on the bulk or the yard debris, that it get charged to the property? I didn't have a problem with it. Does anyone else? Nope. No. You have your you. consensus answer. Thank you very much. All right. If there's nothing else for the good of the city, we entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Seeing no opposition, special meeting is now adjourned. For those logged into Zoom, please re-log in for the next portion of this meeting. Thank you. We'll take a five-minute break, and then we'll begin our regular council meeting.